Hey everyone, Tony Winston here for Jazz Piano College. I'm going to cover the song Lady Bird by Tad Dameron. I recently did Little Boat, which is also on this same page. So the uh, description, uh, it's a, uh, the, so the, uh, hey everyone. Oh God, sometimes I just can't do these things. All right, uh, this, is, uh, this is Tony Winston from Jazz Piano College and today I'm gonna cover Lady Bird. And it's on this page that also has Little Boat and I recently did a video about that as well. Tad Damron, I believe was a piano player and uh, you know, very influential in the bebop era. And there's some nice chord changes in here. You know, we start off with this first one instead of a two, five, one. We've taken that two and moved it up by a minor third and gone two, five, one, like this. And this idea I saw, um, you, know, the, you know the channel, uh, Open Studio with uh, Peter Martin and Adam Manis. Uh, Adam did a little short the other day talking about, you can take a two, five, one and move it up a minor third, two, five, and get right back to the one. And he gave a few kind of cool examples of how you can do this. And, you know, I mean, we've, we've talked about this backdoor way of, of getting, uh, getting back to the one chord. But I've never heard it presented in quite that way. So I was thinking about it. What if you moved it up another minor third? You know, it also works. Uh, you know, it's like, uh, like in Satin Doll. which is up a minor third from there. And I even tried a little bit on another minor third up like this. And if you do like a, like a uh, root, uh, not a rootless, but like a sharp nine altered voicing, you do the tritone substitution, that gives you that B flat again, which you know, would take you there as well. So of an interesting concept for sure. So anyway, uh, that's what happens in this song in the very first line. And listen to the recording this morning and you've got a little, little counter line going on like that. So if you want to put that in. I don't know. I don't know exactly the... Uh, Yeah, that sounds better. Like a, I guess you don't need the fifth down there. Maybe the third would be good. All right, so for this minor 11th chord, there's your Berkeley College of Music voicing. And another one right here on B flat 13. B flat seven with a nine and a 13. And we're back to our, I don't think they do that, they do, uh, what is it? And now we do, uh, all right, a two, five, one to A flat. I think that harmony works pretty well to do kind of a chromatic thing there. And then do it in A minor also. No, it doesn't work in A minor. Maybe do something like that, but maybe just not. <laughs> so a uh, good voicing might be like that, or maybe this. But since that melody's moving up there, I think I'll stay, stay away from having the inner notes be too close to that. And then here, uh, right there is the Berkeley College of Music voicing. Might do a little chromatic thing like that. And then here's our two, five, one. All right, so uh, that's our voicing. And you know, these Berkeley College of Music vo uh, voicings, uh, you can print them out down there in the description. And here's another one. Again, it's a G13. 
And, you know, this is a 2-5-1 because E minor is like a substitute for C major, you see. It's, there's E minor, just put a C there, and it's a C major 7. So it is, really is a 2-5-1. You could go, and that's, that is cycle of fifths, because this is like a tritone substitution of that, and then a tritone substitution of that. So, but they go a different way. So where does E flat typically go? To A flat, major seventh, that's what the triangle means. And then you know, we've got a substitute for the five chord, substitute being D flat. And there's something in the intro too that's something like. Okay, so it's that uh, G seventh chord. And what does it have in it? You tell me, what does it have in it? All right, here's G seven. What's that? What's that? And then they go like, like that. Is that what it? No, it's just right. that the rhythm. Let's make sure. No, I don't know what all that is, and I'm not going to figure it out. So it's something like. Something like that, probably. Okay, let's see. What, what else can we cover in this song? How to improvise on it? Well, the simplest thing is just, just to figure out which major scale to use where. So C major. Of course, we put that B bop note in there. And then coming up here on a 2-5-1, we think about what the uh, typical... Uh, resolution to this 2-5 is, which is E-flat. So let's use E-flat major scale. And then we'll end up on C again. And here we got a 2-5-1 going to A-flat, so I'll use the A-flat major scale. All right. You know, obviously there's some other choices on those dominant chords, but we're keeping it simple. All right, here comes a, a minor to D7. Now that's a 2-5 in G, so let me use the G major scale on that. And then I'm going to D minor, and see I made a chromatic connection into that D minor, All right from there to there. And you know, uh, the flat five is a nice note to put into any a dominant chord or into your solo as well as the uh, flat nine so I could have gone to the flat nine but I went for the flat five instead and on the E minor here thinking think in C because like I said it's a substitute for E so you know you could do you know the Dorian mode but it just doesn't sound right there you know C is better and if you want to know the name of the mode here, if you're doing E minor and you're playing a C, I believe that's Phrygian mode, all right? But, you know, I, I would never think of it that way. The E flat here, look, it, it kind of looks like an A altered or an E flat, you know, this is a rootless voicing. So think of A flat here. And on the D flat here, I'm gonna play another a rootless voicing. Could be could be G altered or D flat ninth. So uh, that's probably the spot where it's best to get away from the major scales and do something a little more exotic. So here's the scale. And you know, if you're looking for places to put in passing tones, look for whole steps. There's a whole bunch of them there, so I'm put one in there. I don't think that works, but you know, 
just do it keeping the notes of the scale on the beat one and two and three and that's the passing tone yeah you could fit one in other places too well, let's do that turn around a few times So I elongated the chords to give me more time to play around with it. Let's keep it short this time. Let's see if I can come up with something good for a change. But, you know, this is a typical thing to do. Do the one, two, three, five on each chord. Unfortunately, it leads you right to that G again. Let's just go over those major scales one more time. We've got C major. E flat, or three flats. Back to C and then a, a flat. G. C. And then here, you know, we're going to think, just maybe outline the chords. Something like that. That's really the, the hardest part of the song to uh, improvise on is those last little, uh, that last little turnaround there. I'm going to target the ninth. All right. So first, let me just let me just start on D flat. And I'm going to use this kind of rootless voicing. So that would get me there. That gets me there. I like either way, so if I remember now, starting on A flat and go up, or A flat and go down. All right, so I gotta hit A flat uh, as I hit the D chord. So let me take it from A flat now. All right, so. see if I can do it a different way all right and so you know what I'm doing is I'm building this into my muscle memory all right and I've read this article one time a long time ago in Time magazine they say well you when you do something like tie your shoes and you know you know how you can just remember how to do it that some kind of a, a layer you know this is like at the at the atomic level uh, you know, molecules, atoms, uh, on the sheath of your nerve, you know, they kind of rearrange themselves or there was a layer laid down. I mean, I can remember stuff in my fingers that I haven't even played for years and it just, it just comes right back to me. So, and I, I really think that age has nothing to do with this. I think it's just a matter of focusing your mind and, and doing something repetitively and your body will absorb it and it's in, your, it's in your atomic structure somehow. So, you know, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm thinking and hearing but also moving physically through these motions. You know, trying to get from A flat, uh, not A flat, D flat back to C and you know I'm doing this a bunch of times and it'll be there for me it'll be there for me tomorrow it'll be there for me a year from now if I you know practice it in enough days consecutively or you know keep it at least on my playlist all right so backing up one more step we got E flat A flat I'm already there, so I don't want to be there. E flat, A flat, D flat. 
Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Like and subscribe, please, and I'll see you soon.